when somebody's shoulder is damaged badly enough, then it needs to be replaced. And a shoulder replacement is really not unlike a knee or a hip replacement. It's certainly less common, and that may be why you haven't heard about it. But shoulder replacements have been around since about the 1950s and really have become quite reliable as of the 1990s. And there's been some nice advancement in technologies in the last 10 years even where the replacements have become more reliable and more durable. One of the most exciting things about shoulder replacements is what's called a reverse shoulder replacement, and I'll discuss that in a little bit. Shoulder replacements, like any other joint replacement, they're artificial joints made of metal and typically plastic. They're made by many different companies. Companies are like car companies. They'll manufacture a product, advertise it, and sell it, and physicians put it in for various reasons. I did want to let you know that the company whose implant I'll typically use is a company that I do do some consulting for. I think this is beneficial to you and to other patients and other surgeons because this allows me to give the company feedback on their device and allows them to make a better device and better implants. It gives me the best and most up-to-date implants and equipment in the operating room and it also gives me the benefit of being able to teach other surgeons and therefore even learn from them but I'll teach them how to put these implants in. So this is a consulting relationship I have with the implant company called Exact Tech, and I'd like you to be aware of that. As far as a replacement goes, typically it's replacing the ball in the socket because the ball is damaged and or the socket is damaged and the rotator cuff is okay. Again, the reverse replacement will be discussed a little bit later and that's for when the rotator cuff may not be okay. But a regular shoulder replacement is done because there's arthritis typically, and this arthritis is, can be from a da damage from dislocations, or breaks, or fractures, or from old injuries, or just wear and tear, or bad luck, or bad genetics. Sometimes people have disorders like rheumatoid arthritis, or, uh, or psoriatic arthritis, and that can cause wear to the joint as well. But the normal smooth joint is damaged, the normal smooth cartilage is damaged, the socket may be damaged and there's pain as there's motion throughout the shoulder. And so a replacement can be done at that point in time. And so what's done with a replacement is access is gained to the shoulder by making a cut in the front of the shoulder and the shoulder can be rolled out and this ball can be cut off. And the ball is cut off and so that we have the ball is removed and then the canal is cleaned out and a stem is put in the canal. And most of the time that's done without cement. And then the socket can be prepared with everything out of the way. A regular shoulder replacement has a plastic socket that's put into the bone. And I can talk to you more specifically about your specifics as far as the shape of your bone, but typically the sockets that have been put in recently have some metal on the back and are cemented into place. Sometimes they're all plastic and cemented, sometimes they're all metal and they're not cemented. And that depends on the shape of the bone, the age and activity level of the patient. But a plastic socket's utilized and then a metal ball can be put onto that metal stem and a shoulder replacement works by having a plastic socket and a metal ball. This requires that the rotator cuff holds it in place. If the rotator cuff is not in good shape, the ball can move around and can loosen the socket. It can bang up into the ball here and that causes pain. So if you have a bad rotator cuff and your ball is sitting up here already, a regular shoulder replacement won't work. Sometimes in rare cases or less common cases, when the ball rides up here, I'll replace it with a ball that comes over the edge. And that's for someone who's a bit younger that we don't want to do a reverse in. But if the ball is riding high, or sometimes if the shape of the bone here is bad enough that I can't put a regular socket in, then I'll do a reverse shoulder replacement. And like I said, this is one of the more exciting advancements in shoulder replacements over the last few years. And reverse shoulder replacements didn't become available in the United States until around 2004. And this particular device didn't come out until around 2006, and I began to use it around 2007 or 2008. And after having done about over 140 of these reverses, I've seen that they've worked very well. But they do have some limitations, and we need to be aware of that. A reverse shoulder is done by reversing the ball in the socket. So instead of a ball, a plastic socket is put on the stem. Instead of a socket here, a ball is put on here, attached to a metal plate that's screwed into the bone. Typically, we don't use cement for these devices. This is now reversed, but it will still allow motion. There's a higher chance of it dislocating or coming out of socket than a regular replacement. And there's a lot of stress on this because of the way that the, it's kind of held into place. 
and we worry that this may loosen. Some devices on the market, the plastic will come down and bang into the bone here, and then the bone can wear down here. This particular device doesn't seem to do that very often, and I haven't seen it happen yet in any of my patients to any significance, so I'm very satisfied by that. I also haven't seen anybody loosen their socket yet, but I have seen some patients dislocate and need to be put back into place, or maybe even have this piece of plastic changed to one that's a little bit deeper to prevent them from dislocating again. So there is a higher complication rate with the reverse shoulder, but it's very amazing what it can do for people who can't have anything else done for their shoulder. Any joint replacement, including a shoulder replacement, can get infected, and that's always a big concern we have. So that's a risk of any replacement surgery. So there's lots of things we do to prevent that, such as have you scrub up with special soap at home, we scrub you up with special soap in the operating room, I put a sheet of uh, plastic over your shoulder that has antibiotic or antibacterial um, chemical in it that will help kill any bugs on your skin. I'll seal your skin with glue and I'll put another sheet of plastic over it when I'm done to seal it in and prevent uh, complications or infections as well. But on rare occasions there are infections and then we have to treat that with more surgery and potentially even take the implant out temporarily. And that can change the overall outcome. I would say the risk of uh, infection is well under 1%. There's a risk of dislocation with either type of shoulder replacement. It's definitely higher with a reverse. In my hands, it's been pretty infrequent, even in the reverse. I think it's less than 5%. There's a risk of nerve injury where nerves can get stretched and there can be damage to the hand or shoulder because the nerves are stretched. This is almost always temporary, but it could be permanent. There's several things I do now to prevent this from happening. I haven't seen any problems since I made some changes in the way I started to expose or open up the shoulder uh, about two years ago. The very few cases I saw of it prior to that have, have, have disappeared, so I've been happy with that. Overall, the results from a shoulder replacement tend to be very good. If someone is real stiff before a shoulder replacement, they still will typically have some stiffness. The shoulder motion should improve after shoulder replacement, but this is variable based on how much you, you can move before the surgery and what the problem is. So we'll talk about that as far as your specific case. We expect shoulder replacements to last hopefully a long time. We're not sure how long the reverse replacements are going to last since they've only been around since around 2004, 2005. They haven't been in patients long enough. Once I've seen them work, I haven't seen them loosen. I've had some in now since around 2008 that haven't loosened, so I'm getting some experience beyond five years that I've seen no evidence of loosening, and I'm hoping they're going to last 15 or 20 years or more. A regular shoulder replacement should last the same or longer as well. But there can be issues where the shoulder will loosen, or the plastic will wear down, or the device will wear out and need to be replaced again. It becomes harder with each operation to replace a device again, so we'll need to talk about that in your specific case. Hopefully if you have a shoulder replacement, it's one surgery and you're done, you don't need any more surgery. But there's always a possibility with a replacement surgery of any joint that it'll need to be done again or redone or fixed because of wear and tear or loosening or some mechanical problem.